reserve our prayer notes to the end. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, uh, just going to seek his help, amen? <laughs> Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. And Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. He is our comforter. He is our teacher. He is our guide. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to help us hear what it is that you're saying to our hearts. That hearts are open and wide, ready to receive the engrafted word of God. Oof, thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is so rich, and it brings life. Jesus, you are life. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And we thank you because of your sacrifice, because of your broken body, because of your shed blood. We stand here today before you. We thank you that we see you seated at the right hand of God, our great high priest, ever living to make intercession for us. And you've sent the Holy Spirit to help us. And we lean on him today, both in the speaking and the hearing and the doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Well, I, I, I almost sense, if I could say, he saves the best for last. Um, we, we've been studying Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Um, why don't you all go ahead and recite that with me, if you would, because I'm sure you know it by now. It's been weeks, hasn't it, that we've been looking at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we've looked at, over the weeks, we've looked at... Uh, Several of those words pastors taught us about the transformation and we looked at the life of the butterfly and the death of the caterpillar. That's so important because we've been crucified with Christ. That's a really important key. But uh, uh, last week and the week prior, we were, we were focusing on the sacrifice. Sacrifice meaning a drawing near. A drawing near because we want to draw nearer to God. So sacrifice actually comes from the word Corbin, meaning to draw near, to draw near. It wasn't to appease an angry God, right? Sacrifice is not to appease an angry God. It's a way of drawing near. And uh, then we looked at the word present, present ourselves, present our bodies. And we talked about the word present, meaning yield, to yield ourselves. We don't yield ourselves to the flesh. We yield ourselves to the spirit. We looked at those verses, yielding ourselves to the spirit, not the flesh. Because who we yield to is, is who governs us, right? Whatever we yield to will govern us. So if we yield to the flesh, the flesh is going to govern us. If we yield to the spirit, the spirit is going to govern us. So it's about presenting ourselves, yielding ourselves. So today we're going to focus in... Um, before I, before I say that, um, in presenting ourselves and offering our bodies a living sacrifice, we saw that then Romans uh, 12, 2 is, says that we're transformed. So it's in the presenting. It's in the sacrifice that we're transformed, yeah. right? They're not separated. It's in the presenting that we're transformed. And so because he's such a helper... Um, he shows us how we present ourselves. So let's look at 12.1 again. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That's, let that be highlighted today for us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We know that means worship. But, okay, so look at that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. By there is a, is a key word. We, we've done a, uh, several teachings on prepositions and the words that are connectors 
Those connectors are very important. So here it says, by the mercy of God. By is the channel or act or the means how to do it. Through the mercy. How do you present yourself? Through the mercy. That's the channel of act. That's, that's the means on how to do it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So you're not presenting yourself on your own, on your own strength or your own will. You're presenting yourself by the mercies of God. The mercies of God are enabling you to present yourself, if I can say it that way. So let's look at Lamentations, if we could. Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. Of course, we know this is in the Old Testament. Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 21. And this is what it says. This, this I recall to my mind. Doesn't that remind you of something in our previous lessons? This. This I recall to my mind. There's something we need to recall to our mind. Our previous lessons, we talked about the things we don't recall, the things we don't consider, right? We don't look back. We don't consider our bodies. We don't. But this, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. What is this? Next verse. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. So this is what we recall to our mind. Remember when we uh, heard about Abraham and all the saints of old, that they were not mindful of the country they came out of. Last week we looked at that and how Abraham, when Sarah had died, he said he had to turn his face from that situation. Right? We're not mindful of the things we come out of. Why? Because we'd be tempted to return. But here, now we're seeing what are we to be mindful of? What are we to recall to our mind? This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies. That word mercies means loving kindness. This I recall to my mind. It is the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed. Consumed there means destroyed. It is of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not destroyed. It is of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not exhausted. It is of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not spent. All those words represent consumed. It is of the Lord's mercies, the Lord's loving kindness, that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. That word compassions is his love. His willingness and desire to show mercy. That's compassions. His willingness and desire, his love to show mercy. That love... And that desire to show mercy never fails, it says. That means it never ends and it never ceases. It never ends and it never ceases. So this is what we recall to our mind. We recall to our mind the Lord's mercies. It's because of his loving kindness that we're not destroyed. We don't wear out. We're not spent. We're not exhausted. His loving kindness. His loving kindness. Right? And why is it his loving kindness that keeps us? Because his compassions never fail. His love never stops. His love never ends. It never ceases. Wow. That's what we're recalling to our mind. Him. His mercy. His love never fails. Never comes to an end. They're new every morning, it goes on to say. They're new every morning. Every single morning when you get up, there's new mercies, new mercies, new mercies every day. All things new in 2022, every day, every day, every day, new mercies. Whoo! And then it says, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. That sounds like Sarah. Yes. Doesn't that sound like Sarah? Yeah. We all learn that Sarah, what did she get from the Lord? What did Sarah get? She got strength from, from, from the Lord. How did she get that strength? By counting him faithful. 
judging him faithful. She judged him faithful. So we're, we can, you know, we can read this and, and judge him faithful with it. Lead our thoughts. That's what judge means. We lead our thoughts to his faithfulness. Yeah. We lead our thoughts to his faithfulness. They're new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Amen. Saith my soul. Yeah. Our soul has to be involved in this, right? Yeah. Our souls, we're about, it's about renewing the mind, being transformed in our soul, saving of the soul. We know when we were born from above, we became new creatures in Christ, yeah. right? Our spirits were transformed, but our souls... It's about saving our souls, renewing our mind, washing our minds with the water of the word, right? Yeah. Right. So our soul, our soul here has to say something. Engage our souls in our praise. Right? right? Therefore, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And then I love this, verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him seeks him and that's that's what we've been talking about is drawing near seeking him desiring him wanting to see more of him more of his glory i beseech you there friend therefore brethren sistren by the mercies of god by the compassion of god present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service Jesus shows us again and again through his life on earth. When he was living on the earth, Jesus demonstrated these mercies that we just read about. It says over and over and over again through the Gospels that Jesus was moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He didn't just have compassion. That compassion that he had in him moved him to do something. He was moved with compassion. See, that, that's what mercy does. Mercy acts. Compassion acts. We, we can all day long feel something for somebody, but if we don't act on that, what benefit is it? Right? He was moved with compassion. So I wanted to take some time and, and actually look at what did that look like when Jesus was moved with compassion. So we're going to just look at a few verses here in the Gospels. Uh, we'll start with this first one. This is in uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Uh, here Jesus is going to be, we're going to see that he was moved with compassion Moved with compassion. Uh, start with verse 14. When he, Jesus, came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. They'd already been seeing some things. They've already been experiencing things. We're kind of going uh, from, the, from the back to the front. And you'll see how that all works out. He asks the scribes, why are you questioning them? And one of the multitude said, Master, I have brought unto you my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wherever he takes him, he tears him, and he foams, and he gnashes with his teeth, and pines away. And I spoke to the disciples and they, that they should cast him out, and they could not. Before I continue reading, I'm really arrested with how Pastor Steve has been teaching us that we begin to read the Gospels not so much as the recipients of the blessing, but the demonstrators of the blessing. Amen. Amen. We're seeing as God sees, right? We've, we've, we're seeing as God sees. God's helping us see as, as God sees. 
So Jesus in verse 19, now from that perspective, we can understand this next statement. He answered and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I help you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, the young boy, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, Jesus asked his father, how long is it ago since this came on him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us. If you can do anything, have compassion on us. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway, the father of the child cried out, said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus saw that the people came running together. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying, Dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him, enter no more into him. The spirit cried, rent him sore, came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. That was compassion in demonstration. If you can do anything, have compassion on us. And Jesus acted it out. He demonstrated that compassion. He demonstrated that compassion. Okay, look, let's look at a couple more. Let's go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. So that first uh, demonstration was he cast out a devil, right? Right? Compassion casts out devils. Say that with me. Compassion casts out devils. All right. Next example. This is Jesus we're looking at. Chapter 7 of Luke, starting with verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said to her, weep not. And he came, and he touched the bier, the coffin, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up, began to speak, and he delivered him unto his mother. Compassion raises the dead. Compassion raises the dead. This I recall to my mind. The mercy, the compassion. This I recall to my mind. Compassion drives out devils. Compassion raises the dead. Amen? This I recall to my mind. Compassion. Okay, I'm going to save that one for the, for the last. A couple more. We're going to go to Matthew, and we're going to look at chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to start with verse 35. This is uh, Matthew chapter 9 is Thriving Life's mission statement, revealing, restoring, revealing, representing, and restoring. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. 935. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Compassion praise. Compassion praise. 
Compassion prays for the harvest. Compassion prays the way Jesus said we're to pray. We pray for the people that are lost and without a shepherd. Amen? Compassion teaches. Compassion preaches. Compassion heals. Jesus moved with compassion, did all those things. Jesus moved with compassion. Remember, the mercy, compassion is the moving through, the, the through, the by. By his mercy, we present our bodies. By his mercies, we present our bodies, a living sacrifice. And the context of Roman was what? If you teach, teach. If you give, give. If you heal, heal. All of the things in Romans chapter 12, that those, the mercy is what in, empowers you to do that. The compassion of the Lord is what empowers you to do those things. Yeah. Empowers you to do those things. Jesus is our example. He's our example. His compassion moved him. The compassion from the Lord in his heart moved him to do something. It moved him to step out. It moved him to take a risk. It moved him to open his mouth. It moved him to spit in the dirt and put mud in somebody's eyes. That compassion is what moved him. That compassion is what moved him to speak to a dead body and say, get up. Yeah. That compassion is what moved him to speak to a devil and said, get out. Amen. Glory to God. Compassion. Yeah. That compassion is to move us. It's to move us to action, his compassion. This I recall to my mind, his mercy, his compassion. <sighs> Glory. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go to Luke. Luke. Luke chapter 10. Back to Luke. There's so many of the compassions. I have them all marked, but we're not going to take the time. We're going to go to this verse today. Whew. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Now this, um, this situation is right after Jesus had, the, had sent the 70 out two by two. He sent the 70 out. He told them to heal the sick, right? He told them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. And so uh, they come back. And in verse 25, a certain lawyer stands up. 1025, a certain lawyer stands up and tempts him, questions him. Master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And he says, Jesus asks him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered right. This do and you will live. Remember he asked, how do I have eternal life? This do and you will live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Love your neighbor as yourself. And who is my neighbor? So Jesus answered him and he said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Who's called a thief in the Bible? Satan. Satan's called thief in the Bible. The thief comes to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Right. So a certain man. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment. Stripped him of his value and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him 
he passed by on the other side. Priest. What does priest represent? Religion. Certain priests came by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he is at the place, he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. What does Levite represent? The law. The keeping of all the law. But a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And he set him on his own beast. And he brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and he gave them to the host and said, take care of him. And whatever you spend more than what I've already given you, when I come again, I will repay you. When I come again, I will repay you. When I come again, I will repay you. Which now of these three, he's answer, asking the lawyer, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. So we can learn some things from, from this account. As I know, we, the Holy Ghost is already speaking to our hearts as we, as we look at the word. But it says, uh, a certain Samaritan, verse 33, a certain Samaritan. In, in those days, there's several accounts of Jesus' interaction with Samaritans. And Samaritans were half Jew, half Gentile. Half Jew, half Gentile. That was their nationality, if I could say it that way. And they lived in other regions. And Jews didn't want anything to do with them. Right? The Levites really represent that. The Jews didn't want anything to do with the Samaritans. So Samaritan here reminds me really of the, of the body of Christ. Half Jew, half Gentile. Because when we're born from, a, a, when we're born from above, we become Abraham's seed. Right? And Abraham is, is Jewish by, by birth. And we become Abraham's seed by being born from above. So you could say almost that we're the Samaritan, half Jew, half Gentile. So the Samaritan, it, as, he, as he comes, he's journeying in, in life, and he comes to where this person is. He comes to where he is. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. When he saw him, he had compassion on him. See, I believe that's seeing him as he truly is. Seeing him as God sees him. Wounded. Bleeding. Stripped of his raiment. So... We were at the restaurant the other day. And we were having lunch, and a young man came to us as our server. And he didn't know who he was anymore. He didn't know who he was anymore. He had fingernails on, long fingernails on, 
and he walked very delicately. He didn't know who he was anymore. And I heard his heart crying, help me, help me, help me. I'm going back to that restaurant. I'm going back to that restaurant. Because I saw him. I saw him the way God sees him. I saw the devil had stripped him of who he really is. He didn't know his value. He didn't know how much God loved him. I'm going back to that restaurant. Amen. I'm going back. Awesome. It'll take me. <sighs> yeah, so young. So young. <sighs> he says he went to him and he bound up his wounds. Pouring in the oil and the wine. Pouring in the oil and the wine. Some of you might remember a few months back, I was on assignment to go to Minnesota and bring the word to a group of women. And as I was preparing for it, the Lord says, remember the oil and the wine. Remember the oil and the wine. And, and I, ex I, I heard it. And I just said, yes, sir, I'll, I'll do that. And then as I sat longer, I started really meditating on that. And I said, Lord, what is the oil and the wine? Because my head, you know, went to all the things I know about the oil and the wine. But I wanted to hear from him what it was. So I said, Lord, what is the oil and the wine? And he said, it's the juice of the fruit. It's the juice of the fruit. And I sat there for a few minutes, and I said, the juice of the fruit? Well, logically, I understand that about the wine. I understand that, you know, that grapes, when you squeeze grapes, you get juice. I squeeze an orange, I get juice. I, I understand the juice of the fruit. But I said, but Lord, we're talking about oil, too. You said the juice of the fruit, and he said, olives are, are fruit. I was like, whoa. <laughs> So now, now I'm sitting with him, and we're having this dialogue about the wine and the oil. Remember the wine and the oil. Don't leave home without it. Don't go out without the oil and the wine. Don't go out without the oil and the wine. See, how is that oil and wine produced? How was it produced in Jesus' life? A great pressing a great crushing comes upon the fruit to produce the oil and the wine what's happening today on this planet is a great crushing and a great pressing and it will produce the oil and the wine from the spirit that lives on the inside of you as you've been Walking with the Lord, drawing near to the Lord, you're having that fellowship with the Lord. When you're intimate one with another, fruit is produced. Yeah. And now that fruit can be pressed by things, people, situations, and the result is the oil and the wine. Yeah. Don't leave home without it. Don't leave home without the oil and the wine. That's the compassion that flows. You see that. When he was moved with compassion, he poured in the oil and the wine. When we're moved with compassion, we just know all we have to do is pour in the oil, pour in the wine. That's, that's all we have to do is pour in the oil, pour in the wine. Right? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane means a great pressing, a crushing. That's why he was able to continue his mission, because the fruit produced the juice, the oil, the wine. And that's what got him to the cross. Notice 
when he poured in the oil and the wine. Verse 34, the Samaritan poured in the oil and the wine, set him on his own beast. say, there you go. You're on your own. He didn't, he didn't do that. He set him on his own beast. And he brought him to an inn. Couldn't the inn represent a church? Brought him to the inn, the place of refuge, the place of hope. Yes. Yes. Brought him. How, how, how good it is to, to lead someone to the Lord but then how better it is to say, now I'm going to come and get you next Sunday and bring you to church because you got to start growing, yeah. right? We don't want to forget all the parts. Praise God you're leading people to the Lord. Praise yeah. God you're getting the phone calls. We've been hearing the testimonies. We've been hearing the testimonies. Yeah. People are having opportunity to lead people to the oil, Lord, and they're getting born again. We're pouring in. We're, we're pouring in the wine. We're pouring in the oil. But go the next step. Put them on your own beast. Come back. I'm going to take you to the inn. I'm going to take you. I'm going to bring you. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you helpless. I'm going to, I'm going to stay with you. Yes. Yes. And it says he took care of him. He took care of him. See, do you see how <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2 comes into play here? Let's go back to Romans to refresh ourselves. Romans 12, 1 and 2. We're not going to leave the oil and the wine. We're not going to leave the, the Samaritan here. But being out of time, we're going to go ahead and just wrap it up with Romans 12 here. One and two. Well, actually many verses here. We're going to start with one. I beseech you, therefore, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, but through the mercy, you present, you yield your body, a living sacrifice. Remember, it's living it's a living sacrifice. It's a, it's a living drawing near, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, worship. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you prove, you discover what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. What is the choice of God for you? For I say, through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ." And every one members one of another, having gifts differing according to the grace that God gives us. God gives each of us grace. We've all gotten faith. Now God gives us grace. Grace. Grace is related to mercy, compassion. Old Testament has said grace, mercy, loving kindness, all linked together. Gives us his grace. And that is given to us whether for prophecy let us prophecy according to the faith that we've been given. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Perform the ministering. He that teaches on teaching. He that exhorts on exhorting. He that gives, let him give with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Adhor what is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Worship, which is your reasonable service, your reasonable worship, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So as we, as we look to God and, and seek him on the inside of us and allow him to show us what that mercy and that compassion looks like, every opportunity that we're presented with, he's desiring to show mercy. 
He's desiring us for us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And we do that through the mercy. So we say, here I am, Lord. We draw near. Here I am, Lord. How would you demonstrate your compassion to that one? I see him, Lord. I see, I see him. You ask the Lord as you present. You say, here I am. I'm presenting myself. How would you demonstrate your compassion to that one? And he'll show you, and then you act on it. You demonstrate that compassion that rises up on the inside. And it rises up when you ask him, show me, show me. That's what happened to me at that restaurant. That's what happened to me at that restaurant. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm seeing, I'm seeing with my natural eyes everything everybody else is seeing. But I said, Lord, I want to see him the way you see him. And he showed me. And I heard, help me, help me, help me. I heard it. Stand to your feet. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you're revealing your heart to us. You're revealing your heart to us, Lord. Jesus, we see how you demonstrated your compassion. We see how you demonstrated your goodness and your mercy in every situation, Lord. You're such a good teacher. And our hearts cry, Lord, is that we imitate you. We, we, we reveal you. We represent you, Lord. Father, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that you never lose patience with us. That you see us a completed, finished work because of the blood of Jesus. We've been made right by the blood of the Lamb. And that blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I know that your wine, the blood of the Lamb, the wine represents the cleansing, Lord the antiseptic of the word. We're washed by the water of the word because of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for pouring the wine into us. And then the oil, Lord, the oil that comforts and soothes. I'm just thinking of with a wound, when you pour an antiseptic in, such as the wine, it, it has alcohol in. There can be some stinging. As the Lord brings correction, there can be some stinging. But it's, but it's antiseptic. It's a cleansing. It's a cleansing. And so our hearts are cleansed by the wine, the representation of the wine, the blood of the lamb. But then he's so good, the Holy Spirit comes in with the oil. The oil, the oil, the oil. <laughs> cleanses and, and, and uh, soothes, soothes, that's the word, soothes. The oil and wine together are the perfect combination. Soothing, cleansing, and soothing. And I just hear the heart's cry of everyone in here that they so want to demonstrate Jesus. There's not one person in here that doesn't want to demonstrate the love of Jesus. And so let our focus be this I recall to my mind. Let our focus be I set my sights on his mercy, his love. Not the way I missed it. Not how I could do better. Should have done, would have done, could have done. No. His mercy. His loving kindness. His love. His demonstration of his love. We focus on that. We recall that to our mind. And we see how it changes everything. It changes everything. His love changes everything. 
Thank you, Lord. It's a healing balm. A healing balm. Ha ha. Marcia, come up. It's a healing balm. It's a healing balm. Ha ha. Oh, the oil and the wine. The oil and the wine. It's a healing balm. It's a healing balm. Ha ha. Oh, it's a healing balm. Oh, oh, oh. 